A high yield savings account can be ignored no longer. If you've been saving your money in a bank savings account, it's time to leave and put money into a high yield savings account. There is easily hundreds to thousands of dollars more to be made in a high yield savings account. The interest rates just keep going up to the point where they cannot be ignored. If you have $20,000 in a bank savings account, whether that's your emergency fund, you're saving for a house, a car, whatever it is, the average savings rate for a high yield savings account right now is around 5%. So if you have that $20,000 in a high yield savings account and it is automatically giving you 5%, that's $1,000 that you're gonna make this year by doing absolutely nothing other than opening up a high yield savings account, which takes less than 10 minutes and you just made $1,000. A bank savings account, for example, the average interest rate is 0.4%, 20 times less than a high yield savings account. If you don't have a high yield savings account, you need to watch this video. What is a high yield savings account? A high yield savings account is an account where you can put money into and you get a variable interest rate on that money and it's traditionally higher than a regular bank savings account. High yield savings accounts are usually through online banks. They're not your typical brick and mortar banks like Wells Fargo. So why don't companies like Wells Fargo and regular banks offer that higher rate. If there's online banks that can do it, then why can't Wells Fargo do it? Well, because Wells Fargo has to pay for storefronts and advertisements. And to be honest, they're just plain greedy. Their advertisements are so good and their customer base is so good, they don't need to offer higher interest rates to bring in new customers. When people need to open up a bank account, they're gonna go to one of those bigger banks. They're not gonna come right off the jump and open up a high yield savings account. There are some other things that a high yield savings account does not offer. Let's talk about it. Why does anyone have money in a bank savings account now, as opposed to a high yield savings account? If the interest rate is so good, we touched on it, but brick and mortar banks are what people are just used to. They trust the big banks. They're the names that you see all the time. A lot of people too, just don't have a lot of money. So going to a high yield savings account doesn't make you that much more money if you have less than $1,000 in your bank account anyway. The average account balance in America right now is $5,300 in a bank account, which I would still encourage you move to a high yield savings account because 5% of $5,300 is still $265 that you're gonna make in a high yield savings account that you would never make in a regular bank savings account. The other major reason why people don't invest in high yield savings account is just because they're, they're just lazy. Like they just don't wanna go through the effort of opening up a new account and transferring money in there. This was me for a long period of time. But like I said, you cannot ignore it any longer. You need to move your money into a high yield savings account. Fight through the laziness, open a high yield savings account. I promise you it makes 10 minutes. Your 10 minutes time is worth $1,000. Historically, another advantage that regular bank savings accounts had was in a high yield savings account, it was regulated where you could not take out more than six withdrawals a month. As of 2021, the Federal Reserve did away with that rule. So you can now make unlimited withdrawals from a high yield savings account. Not every company has caught up there yet, however. Look for companies when you're opening an HYSA that allow for unlimited withdrawals. Bank savings accounts also have storefronts. They have typically better customer service if you wanna go and talk to someone in person. I don't know when the last time I ever went to a bank to talk to someone in person is, but you know, people like that. People trust that. Typically your high yield savings account isn't going to have any ATMs or an ability to have an ATM card like your bank account is. So if you need the money right away and you need to withdraw it or pay for dinner, whatever the case may be, that's not money that should be in your high yield savings account. Unfortunately, that's money that still has to be in a bank savings or checkings account. Now, can a high yield savings account maybe get there one day? Maybe. It's a trending that way. Can you get ahead of it? Yes, by opening a high yield savings account now. You're still gonna need to maintain both, but keeping the bulk of your money in a high yield savings account is gonna make you the most money in the long term. Also think about this, what if you used a credit card and you don't pay your credit card bill to the end of the month? Can you move the money out of the high yield savings account and pay off the credit card by the end of the month? Certainly, that's one way to do it. So you might be wondering, who determines a high yield savings account interest rates and how do they have such a high rate right now? Have you ever heard of the thing called the Fed? The Fed is short for for the Federal Reserve. Think of the Federal Reserve as this. It's the governing body that governs over the US monetary system. So like you have the Supreme Court that governs over federal cases and case law, 
We have this thing called the Federal Reserve that governs over the U.S. economy and U.S. currency. They are mainly in charge of making sure that the economy is functioning properly and curbing really high inflation and stimulating the economy. So what does that mean? And how does the Fed affect your HYSA? Here's how. When the economy is facing an economic downturn, the Fed lowers interest rates, making it easier for people to borrow money because the more people that borrow money mean the more people that are spending money into the economy. So when we wanna pump money into the economy and stimulate the economy, we will lower interest rates so that more people can borrow money and pump it into the economy. This is what we did, similar concept with stimulus checks. We gave people free money so that they would take that money and spend it into the economy. When people spend money into the economy, the economy grows, inflation increases because now there's more people buying paper towels. And when there's more people that buy paper towels, the price of paper towels goes up. And that's how we improve the economy during a downturn. So if we're in a low economic time, interest rates are going to be very low. Now, if we're in a high inflation time, like we are right now, where inflation is at an all time high, the Fed raises interest rates. So it makes it harder for people to borrow money because now you're borrowing money at 6% interest instead of 1% interest. So less people are going to borrow money. Therefore, that's less money that's going to be pumped into the economy. And if there's less people buying stuff, that means inflation is going to slow. The Fed has raised interest rates seven times in 2022 and three times already in 2023. We are seeing them raise interest rates at a speed we have almost never seen before. So now when you go borrow money from a bank, you're borrowing money at five, six, 7% interest to get out money. So if I, Tim Wolf, were to take $20,000 and give it to an online bank in a high yield savings account, they could take that $20,000 and they could loan it out to somebody who's going to take out a mortgage at 6%. And now the bank is making 6% off of my 20,000. Therefore they can afford to kick me back 5% and they're going to take the 1% off the top. When banks are moving billions of dollars, making 1% off your money is a good profit. Now, if the Fed lowered national interest rates and let's say it wasn't 4.75% like it is right now, Let's say the Fed kept lowering interest rates to 2%. So if I give a bank 20,000 and they can only loan it out to somebody at 2%, well, they're only going to kick me back 1% because they're still going to make their 1% profit. So let's look at historical interest rates that the Fed has set. So this is a 20 year chart right now. And so look, this is why HSYAs were not that popular, right? In the 2010 era, because interest rates were so low and they're flatlined for a long period of time. So having your money in a bank savings account as opposed to a high yield savings account didn't make that much a difference. We saw a little bit of a spike up to about 2.4% in 2019. COVID happened and look at this steep incline, right? Just in the year 2022 and 2023, we have seen rates skyrocket. This right here is why you're getting so much more now for your high yield savings account. Has this ever happened before? Yes, obviously it has. Let's go back. August or April of 2007, it was over 5%. So can this happen again? Yes. This is why you cannot ignore a high yield savings account. It's never going to zero out. You're never going to lose your money. Most high yield savings account are FDIC insured, just like a bank savings account. What does that mean? Up to $250,000 per person. If the bank collapsed, and went bankrupt, the federal government would still pay you back every penny that you had in that account up to $250,000. So you don't have to worry about you ever losing money. You're never gonna lose your original principal. Anything you gain is just gonna be extra money. What if we look at a 50 year chart? Look how high interest rates are for the majority of history. And now that HYSAs are increasing in popularity, if you had an HYSA since all this time, you would have made so much more money than if you had a bank savings account. Who's to say that this isn't going to continue or that the next 50 year chart isn't gonna look like this? I don't know. All I know is that if you never have money in an HYSA, you are for sure gonna miss out on it. So here's a little bonus for you guys. Where do you open up an HYSA? I'm not affiliated or sponsored by any online bank. I've done a little bit of research. I like the company Betterment. Right now they're offering 5% for new customers. And then after six months, that'll go back to their 4.75% rate, which is still one of the highest ones around. Betterment's great because they have unlimited withdrawals. 
there's no account minimum. So you can put a hundred dollars in there if you wanted to. There's also no fees whatsoever. So you don't have to worry about paying annual fees or monthly fees on your money. If you don't like Betterment for whatever reason, you can Google search top 10 best HYSAs and you'll get a response back and you can just, whatever one frequently pops up that you really, really like, just pick it and go with it. A lot of them are the same. Just make sure they have these three things. You need to evaluate whether they have a minimum deposit because some do. You'll see some of them are at 5.25%, which is a lot, but they have fees and they have a minimum deposit of $5,000 or more. Obviously you need to consider the APY. That's the percentage you're gonna make on your money. Right now, the Fed is about 4.75%. So if you're making anything less than 4%, that's, that's a pretty bad HYSA right now. If you're making something around 5% or more, that's a really good interest rate on an HYSA right now. And lastly, withdrawing money. Like I said, there is no restriction on the amount you can withdraw from an HYSA anymore. They got rid of that. So make sure that you can have an unlimited withdrawal from an HYSA if need be. That's it for this video, guys. If you got anything out of the video, please hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you wanna hear more financial education videos. Any specific questions you have, go ahead and comment them down below. I will see you in the next video.